Hello and uh, welcome to Mr Barton's autograph video number 41. Now this week we're going to continue our theme of looking at dice and all things statistical and we're going to see how autograph can actually help us introduce the binomial distribution and we could even use this for key stage 3 or key stage 4 students. So first thing we're going to need to do is crack ourselves open a brand new statistics page, there we go, and we're going to need some data. So we've looked at generating data from distributions before, so let's go into enter raw data. And what I'm going to do is I want a binomial distribution. Now, as I said at the start, it doesn't really matter if the students haven't encountered a binomial before. And indeed, this is a good little way of introducing them to it. So if I click binomial distribution, and I'm just going to edit my distribution and see what I've got here. So that's going to be my sample size, and that's going to be my probability of a success. So I can explain to the students that what I'm going to be doing here is tossing a coin 10 times, and the probability of me getting heads each time is 0.5, and Autograph is going to record how many times I get heads with each of those 10 tosses of the coin. So I click OK. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to toss this, uh, do this experiment 10 times. So 10 lots of 10 tosses. Um, and let's create my sample there and see what I get. Um, remember, I can sort by X and all that kind of stuff. So that's my data. And let's click OK and let's see what that looks like. And of course, I can get the students to predict what do you reckon the most popular number of heads to get is and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's create ourselves a dot plot of it. So just hover up here, click dot plot. I always like to check they're set to one and one. Click OK and there's my dot plot. Now, it's not a very impressive looking dot plot because I haven't got that many data points, but we can see that five heads is the most popular. N no, no time do we get one heads and at no time do we get nine or eight or anything like that. Now, if I was to draw a box plot of that, what would that look like? And again, we've, we've chatted about this in the past, how you can get the students up with the scribble tool and they can say, right, well, there's your minimum value and your maximum value is going to be there. The median, is it going to be more that side or that side? Well, we can have a little talk about that. Quartile ranges, there, there. And when the students think they've got it, and look at that, that's pathetic, but <laughs> I'm trying to do this with the mouse. Go for something like that, and then whenever the students have got it, you've had a chat about it, you can just easy bang one of these out. Click on box spot at the top, click OK. Oh, look, I got my median the wrong way around, and we can talk about that. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to chat about. There's more to come here. I'm just going to get rid of that scribble. I'm just going to go edit, select all scribbles, and I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. Because now what I can do is I use autograph. Instead of tossing it, sorry, instead of doing the experiment 10 times, I'm going to do it 100 times and see if that affects my results. So I need some more data. So enter all data here. Um, I'm going to select my distribution. I'd like it binomial again, please. Check it's still set to the same. Brilliant. Sample size of 100. Create my sample. Click OK. Notice how quick all this is. Um, bang myself out a dot plot very quickly. Oh, look at autograph trying to change things for me. I'd like it one on one, please. Click OK. There's my dot plot. I can't see a flipping thing because it's off the screen. So I'm going to hit my auto scale thing. There we go. And now, is that going to be a similar box plot if I draw that? Is the median going to have shifted? Are these uh, tails of the box plot, the whiskers, going to have shifted? Well, we can have a chat about it, and then when we're ready, we can just quite easily generate one, raw data, and there it goes, and talk about the things that they've got in common and the things they've got different. Now, I can keep going with that all day long. I can do it a thousand times. I can do it uh, 10,000 times if I want. But what I thought would be quite interesting is what happens if the dice becomes a little bit biased. So I'm just going to delete that box plot at the top there. And I'm going to introduce this little twist. I'm going to change it so the probability of getting ahead is actually 0.75. And I'm going to challenge the students to think, what's that going to mean for the distribution? And what's it going to mean for the box plot? Well, let's have a look. So I'm going to enter raw data. I'm going to select my distribution. I'd like it to be binomial, but this time on edit distribution, the probability of a success is going to be 0.75. OK, let's create our sample. Let's click OK. Now, what's this going to look like? Firstly, as a box, uh, sorry, as a dot plot, let's have a look. Plot it there, change that to one on one, click OK. Well, it seems to have shifted to the right hand side a fair bit. And what on earth does that look like as a box plot? We'll get the students to predict it. When they've got their head around it, click OK. And there's your box plot there. And we can talk about the similarities and differences of that. Hope that was helpful. More next week. Bye bye.